from Hollywood, California, the makers of old gold cigarettes bring you Meet Me at Parkies. <laughs> Some family I've got. I wait all year for Father's Day. Look at the presents you give me. A raccoon coat, a pair of ear laps, an umbrella, and a pair of overshoes. But, Father, don't forget, you're in California. But even so, I can't use ear laps. There, 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 Pop. Don't blow your top. Why be irritated? Light an old gold and meet me at Parky's. Henry Brown is dean of this college. On this, your graduation day, I'm happy to announce that you have been chosen the man most likely to succeed. This makes me very happy, Dean. Happy? This makes the 27th consecutive year I've been wrong. Now, there, there, Dean. Why be irritated? Light an old gold and meet me at Parky's. Yes, everybody meets at Parky's, so come along to Parky's Restaurant and say hello to David Street, Betty Rhodes, Opie Cates and his orchestra, and our genial host, Park Your Carcass. Oh, me. <clears throat> what a day this was. I'm got to do everything around this restaurant. The dishwasher is don't show up. The chef is sick. I told him not to eat here. <laughs> the laundry is done, come back, and even Betty, my cashier, should have been here two hours ago. Now, top everything else, I'm got to type up this menu myself, too. Yeah, uh, might as well get going. Let's see, the first thing I got is uh, roast beef. Roast is R U S T. <laughs> beef is B I F. <laughs> Don't look right. I think it needs a hydrant in between. <laughs> that looks better. Now for dessert, uh, I think I make a colonial pudding. How do you spell colonial? It's a long word, colonial. I better break them up in small syllables. <laughs> Co, that's uh, C O. Lone is L O A N. Now I got cologne. <laughs> Smells good. <laughs> Ni, that's K N E E. Now I got cologne. <laughs> and yield is E E L. I got it. C O L O A N K N E E E E E L. <laughs> Think I left on an E. <laughs> Gee, that's a long word, colonial. Ah, right, the papers don't be wide enough for colonial pudding. I'll make a pie. Hello, Barky. I see you've taken my job. Look, I'm, I'm awfully sorry I'm late. I bet it odds is the first time that you came in late this year. Now, if it happens again, it'll be the second time. <laughs> you know, you're not paying no attention to your job. All you do all day long is dream about that David Street. <laughs> Go on, I do not. Come on, let me get at that typewriter. I'll get the menu done in a jiffy. But he is cute, isn't he, Parker? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go. What's the first item? First item you put down is the 35 cents businessman's lunch. 35 cents? What can you give the businessman for 35 cents? We'll give him the business. <laughs> Marky, you're always joking. Come on, give me the rest of the menu and give it to me fast because I've got a lot to do. I'll give it to you fast. You ready? Ready. Okay, we're going to have sea lime steak and tender lime steak, good piece lamb chop, great big pork chop, nice fried onions, fresh beans, scallions, french fried potatoes, lettuce and tomatoes, shrimp beans, baked beans, hot beans too, good bar cooked out chickens too, mickerel, pickerel, headache, right, lobster, oyster, shrimp, a pike, hot pie, cold pie, soft pie, mud pie, eagleberry, bloomberry, strawberry, good, good pink, 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 squashed up apple, coconut, disgusted, mustard, custard, ketchup, chili, salt and pepper, and pickle lily. <laughs> Forty-five cents. Oh, Barky, not that fast. I'll never get all those dishes done on this menu. Oh, what dishes? All you got to do is put down uh, one dish. One dish? Yeah, hash. <laughs> but if I put down one dish, the customers won't have a choice. They'll have a choice. They can either take it or leave it. Gee, Parky, you know, I wish I could take it or leave it. You mean hash? No, I mean love. It's the same thing. How can you say that? How can you say that hash is the same as love? Well, sure it is. Look, you're a warm dish and you meet a cold potato. <laughs> He's got 
got plenty of lettuce, so you had a couple of dates. He thinks you're a peach. So love starts to boil, you're planning to live on his salary. <laughs> then you find him with another tomato. You start to stew. He goes out and gets fried, and your heart is chopped up into itsy-bitsy pieces. And sister, if that ain't hash, I never heard of it. <laughs> Oh, but Parky David is different. Ah, different. I don't know what you see in that David Street. What has he got? All right, he's handsome. He got big shoulders. He's young. He's healthy. He got social position and he got a lot of money. Say, that is something, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but David won't even look at me. You know, Parky, I'm afraid I'll never get a man. No, but you were able to get 21 men for me, that Opie Cates and his orchestra. For three months, they're here now, and all they do is eat and don't pay. All day long, put it on the cuff, put it on the cuff. Got so many figures there now, I got to hire a special bookkeeper just for my cops. Yes, but Parky, they're in a fine attraction for the restaurant. They play beautifully. Those 21 boys play like one man. I wish they would eat like one man. <laughs> Oppie Cates, look at him standing there. Bet he don't weigh 75 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> First time I ever seen a chest and a backbone with no mister in between. <laughs> Well, I'll admit he does look like an accident going someplace to happen, but he's kind of a sweet little guy. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel awfully sorry for him. Look, doesn't he look sad standing there? Sad? He looks unconscious. <laughs> Opie, come here. Well, hello, Betty. Hi, Parky. Hi. Say, you know something? You're all out of bacon. We had to eat ham again today. <laughs> That's a new one. He don't pay any complaints. I never heard anything like that. Betty, I was just thinking maybe tonight we could have us another date, huh? Oh, you mean you want me to walk down the street to the bakery and smell hot bread again? <laughs> Gee, Opie, we've done that for three nights in a row. Well, I know, but tonight they're putting raisins in it. <laughs> no, I'm allergic to raisins, Opie. Well, I kind of wanted to talk over a swell new song called I Wish I Knew. If you're not busy, maybe we could run it over with you now. Well, gee, I'd love it. Is it all right with you, Parky? No, what are you asking me for? I'm not the boss. I only own this place. I wish I knew someone like you could love me. I wish I knew you place no one above me. Did I mistake this for a real romance? I wish I knew, but only you can.
Gee, I love that arrangement you made of the song. What do you think of it, Parky? It's another arrangement I'd like even better. If he would make an arrangement to pay me that $62.48 he owes me for food. You know, I got a restaurant around here. What does he think what I pay the, the milkman with bottle tops? Well, now, there, there, Parky. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Yeah, I can get... Uh-huh. Oh, Bob Williams. So you don't know what aggravations I got here. Well, Parky, when little annoyances get you down, light an old gold. You'll always enjoy grand extra flavor in an old gold, plus special protection against cigarette dryness. Yeah, protection. That's what I need against that Opie cage. <laughs> well, well, I don't know about Opie, but I do know to help prevent cigarette dryness, old golds are conditioned with a special moisture-protecting agent we call apple honey, made from the juice of fresh apples. In addition, Old Gold's unique blend of many great tobaccos is enriched with rare imported Latakia tobacco for delightful extra flavor. Extra flavor plus extra protection against cigarette dryness. So for a better, keener, tastier smoke, light an Old Gold. You know, that's a good idea. Give me a carton of Old Gold, will you, Parky? (laughs) Boy, is that opi or dopey? You know, there's a limit to everything. Why, yes, you know, uh, even the quantity of old golds is limited, and for a good reason. You know, old gold quality is held to full 24-carat standard. No, no, no carrots. You see, all the carrots goes to the army now. You got to take all the carrots. <laughs> well, you know, and our armed forces get first call on all cigarettes we make. And yet we're doing our best to assure your share of remaining old golds. So, if you must take substitute brands today, remember, you may have old golds tomorrow. You have them tomorrow, huh? Well, that sounds very reasonable. <laughs> Say, Betty, Betty, uh, Betty, what's the matter? I call you and you don't hear me. Oh, I'm sorry, Parky. I guess I was daydreaming. I know I must have been because this registered letter was left for you two hours ago and I forgot to give it to you. Registered letter? Let me see it. Hmm. Dear Mr. Parky Carcass. Say, the man writes a nice letter, doesn't he? <laughs> In fact, July 1st, it will not be necessary for you to send in the rent for your store, as I expect you to promise you a vacation. You'd sign Miss Prudence Rockbottom. Prudence Rockbottom? Why, that's your new landlady. She just bought this building last week. Oh, with a lovely woman. Think of it. Don't got to pay no more rent for this store, and she expects to promise me a vacation. Well, I can't believe it. Promises you a vacation, yeah. no rent? Now, let me see that letter. There it is, right there. You can read it. Expects to promise you a vacation. It says she expects the premises to be vacated. <laughs> No wonder I couldn't read it. She writes too close to the paper. <laughs> Parky, don't you know what this means, Parky? This is an eviction notice. They're throwing you out. Throwing me out? After I'm here 18 years, how can they throw me out? Betty, this is a great shock to me. I am housebroken. <laughs> Parky. Parky, you mean heartbroken. No, no, I mean housebroken. They're treating me like a dog. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, Parky? Your face looks as white as your apron. Even whiter. Oh, Peter, throwing me out of the store, they just sent me a conviction notice. <laughs> throwing you out? That's the worst news I've heard in years. I didn't know you were such a friend of mine. Friend? What's that got to do with it? Where am I going to eat? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got an idea, Parky. Yeah, what is it? Well, look at the signature on that letter. Miss Prudence Rockbottom. Yeah. And the miss is in capital letters. Sounds to me like she's a single woman, and I ain't never heard of no single woman that wasn't looking for a husband. Well, you mean in order to stay in the store, I got to marry her? Well, stores are pretty hard to get today, Parky, and maybe if you went over and talked to no. her... See, that's not a bad idea of Opie's Parky. You should at least go over and have a talk with her. Women have been known to do some awfully strange things if they like a guy a little bit. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, I got a better idea. Instead of me going, Opie's going to go. Oh, no, sir. Not me, Parky. Look, if you don't go, no more food. No more food? No more food. You know something, Parky? You just made up my mind. <laughs> my brain says, Opie, you're going to get yourself into a mess of trouble. But my stomach says, Opie, you're going to get yourself a mess of vittles. So, Miss Rockbottom, Opie's are coming according. <laughs> Yes? How do you do, sir? Sir? I miss Rockbottom. Oh, pardon me. I was looking at you from an angle. (laughs) 
I'm Opie Cates. Uh, Sparky Carcass got your letter about his restaurant. Oh, are you married? Oh, no. Hey, come into the parlor. <laughs> Over there. Well, wouldn't it be better to sit over there on that sofa? You run your business and I'll run mine. <laughs> there now, isn't this nice and comfy? Well, don't you think it'd be better if you sat on my lap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you strong, impetuous man. <laughs> well, see, I came over here to talk to you about Parky's restaurant. So oh, see, I'm been so eating. happy that I just bought the building that you're in. Otherwise, we might never have met. Oh, it ain't my building. I'm just eating Parky's restaurant. Oh, what difference does it make who you are? You're a man. <laughs> of course, if we were to become engaged, it would make a difference, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't take me forward, but you really are handsome. Your eyes are like the azure skies reflected in limpid pools. <laughs> really? Your smile is a touch of heaven What do you know about that? Oh, oh, it's heavenly Oh, but let's not talk Kiss me, kiss me Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself what you said Oh, please, Miss Rockbottom, take your hand off my wrist. You're hurting me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, precious. I don't know my own strength. <laughs> you intoxicate me. Let's get married at once. Oh, come on now. I got to get used to you. <laughs> And maybe in a year. Oh, no, no, no. And maybe in a year. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, you got to give me at least two years. I'm young. I must have my freedom. I want to live. <laughs> well, at least we can be engaged. All right, so we're engaged, but let's keep it a secret, huh? But let's go out tonight and celebrate our engagement. You wait here. I'll go now and make up my face. I want my skin to be soft to your touch. You know something? I learned a trick over in Parky's restaurant that can make your skin nice and smooth very quickly. Really? How? Oh, it's easy. You just dip your face in a pan of boiling water. Dip my face in boiling water? Will that make my face smooth? Well, it always works on dried prunes. Make... <laughs> I know they got less wrinkles than you got. Obie Cates is clarinet in this orchestra play, The Sheik of Araby. <laughs> Thank you. 
Archie, I wonder how Opie's romance is working out. Yeah, well, it's better work out all right because I just finished baking a wedding cake. Oh, look who's back. Bob Williams, old gold salesman. Come in, Bob. Hello, Parky. Hello, Betty. Mind if I use a telephone? No, go right ahead. You'll find a nickel hanging on a string. <laughs> hey. You know something, Parky? Yeah. Did you ever stop to realize what life would be like without the telephone? Now, there's a mighty useful invention. Oh, sure. Without a telephone, there's no use talking. But, no. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, Parky... You know, the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. 1876? Almost 20 years ago. <laughs> no, 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 Parky. That's almost 70 years ago. Oh, really? and, you know, and even at that time, the Laurel Art business was 116 years old. You see, it was founded in 1760. In 1760 it was founded? You know, something I didn't even know it was lost in. Yeah, look, Parky, when I say the Laurel Art business was founded in 1760, yeah. I mean that's when it was started. Oh. And that's nearly two centuries of association with the world's choice tobaccos. And this vast experience is reflected in the quality of old gold cigarettes today. Marvelous quality, consistently maintained despite wartime conditions. Oh, you don't got to tell me about old golds, Bob. Oh. You know, all day long people is asking me for old golds. They say, old golds, old gold, they want you. If I had them, I could sell millions of them. Even thousands. <laughs> As to, as to quantity, Parky, yeah. you know, naturally, that's still limited, for we're still in a fighting war. Uh, yet we're doing our best to assure your share of old golds for home front enjoyment. So, Parky, if your customers must take substitute brands today, remember, you may have old golds tomorrow. Say, Bob, you said that so nicely. Before you go, I'm going to make you a nice southern dish. Gee, that's wonderful. What southern dish? How'd you like to sit down to a nice big bowl of weevils? Oh, <laughs> Hello, Parky. Hiya, Betty. Well, go ahead, Betty. There's your great David Steed. All day long, all you do is talk about him. David Steed, David Steed, David Steed. That's all I hear. And when he comes in, you can't even say hello. Well, that's not true, Parky. You don't believe him, David. Oh, say, how about the dance Saturday night, Betty? Oh, I'd love to go. Well, I'm covering the dance for the paper that night so we can go together. Oh, it'll be a swell affair. Opie's been rehearsing all week for it. Good. Parky, got any items for my column? You hear everything that's going on. Who's getting married? Any blessed events? What do you know that I don't know? What's new? What's new? New York, New Haven, pneumonia, neuritis. <laughs> That's new. Well, if it wasn't for you, none of us could get out of column. You sure get all the dirt, Parky. No, nah, I don't know nothing. If you want any news, you'll have to go around and do your own peeking in your own keyholes. Why, Parky, that, that's embarrassing. <laughs> no, no. The only time it's embarrassing, my boy, is when you peek through a keyhole and see another eye. <laughs> Parky, I'm disappointed. I thought I'd get a big scoop from you today. Well, I tell you what I got for you, Mr. Newspaper Man. I got a new recipe for your household hints column. A recipe, huh? Yes, sir. A little bit out of my line, but I'd be glad to turn it in. Oh, this recipe makes the most beautiful cake what you never tasted in your whole life. Even if you live so long. <laughs> really malicious. Malicious? Positively delirious. This is, <laughs> this is a cake which it is called the Parky Cockers Whipped Cream. Three-layer banana coconut marshmallow maple syrup delight cake. With nuts. That sounds good. How do you make it? Well, first I take 15 eggs. 15 eggs? I pick out three good ones. <laughs> now I take a quart of milk. Homogenized, of course. Homogenized? So, you know, you talk with a dialect? <laughs> now you put in three bananas. Even better if you peel them. <laughs> and now comes the part which I am the most crazy, the maple syrup part. You open up a can of maple syrup, you pour in three galops, and then you... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You pour in what? Three galops, galops. What's a galop? You know, when you open up a can of syrup, you start to pour it, it goes galop, galop, galop. <laughs> Put in three of those. <laughs> Parky, I'd better gallop out of here. I won't have any column tomorrow. Goodbye. Well, well wait a minute. You don't going to leave here without you don't sing a song for the customers, is it? Well, gee whiz, what kind of a song would you like, Parky? A love song. Who's asking you? Well, then, uh, then how about You Belong to My Heart? Oh, that's a very beautiful song. I would like to hear that. You belong to my heart Now and forever 
ever And our love had its start not long ago We were gathering stars While a million guitars played our love song When you said I love you Every beat of my heart said it too Was a moment like this Do you remember And your eyes through a kiss When they met mine Now we own all the stars And a million guitars are still playing Darling, you are the song And you'll always belong to my heart Kid, did you save my store for me? Yep, I sure did. Did you get engaged, Opie? Well, sort of. You're going to meet her. She's coming over here next week. Well, Opie, is she beautiful, huh? Well, to give you a rough idea, she's so homely that she'll never die. <laughs> she'll just kind of lay there and ugly away. <laughs> Opie, just to show you my appreciation, what you did for me, I'm going to have the wedding right here in the restaurant, and everything is going to be in the house. And if later on in your life you have a son, no matter how you do, whether you are rich or poor, your son can always come to me and get a job as a boss boy. <laughs> and so ends the first episode of Meet Me at Parkies. Tune in again next Sunday night, same time, same station. Is it a date? Okay, then, meet me at Parky's. <laughs> it's Bob Williams saying goodnight to old Joe. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>